health care is one of the most rapidly growing industries in the United States. Much of this growth has occurred as a result of efforts to control costs in medical care. One way to cut costs is to have the patients discharged from the hospital quicker and as they say, oftentimes quicker and sicker. An increasing number of patients are being treated in the home by a home health agency. Home health care provides quality medical care in the privacy and uh, security of the home. Hi, I'm Kathy Getrist. I'm an instructor in community health and today we're going to be talking about what is involved in a home visit for a home health aide. Home health, much like hospitals and long-term care facilities, has a Bill of Rights. This Bill of Rights lists the basic rights to which all patients receiving home health care are entitled such things as being treated with dignity, consideration, and respect, having their property treated with respect, or knowing in advance if your individual is going to be responsible for any payment of the home health services. This document is given to the patient by the professional nurse on admission to home health services. It must be signed by the patient or in the event the patient is not uh, cognitively responsible by another individual in the family that they have received the Bill of Rights and also that they understand it. Confidentiality is a major issue in home health. You see and hear things as a home health aide that the family considers private things such as being aware of their personal mail, serious arguments that might be going on between family members, can all be information that uh, you are privy to. The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, also called HIPAA, is the act that protects the privacy rights of patients in the home as they do in hospital or other medical facility. It also allows for a limited access to confidential information of healthcare workers. It's very important not to discuss with anyone other than your nursing supervisor or other individual that is involved in the care of this patient any of the information that you become aware of in the course of your uh, being in the home. Never disturb patients' belongings. If you need to move things uh, to provide the care, be sure that they are put back exactly where they were. This is particularly important for, with people who have uh, low vision or are blind they become very reliant on exactly where things are at and disturbing that can cause injury to them. Always work within the limits of the care plan and the home health uh, assignment sheet. These forms would be found in a folder that uh, the nurse has placed in the home. The assignment sheet would tell you the home health aid exactly what it is that you are to do while you are there. Now I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about the home visit itself. Your personal safety or the safety of any other caregiver in the home is uh, always a concern. Be very alert to conditions and people in the area where you are, um, re are, are visiting. Map out the uh, route in advance and call the patient to inform them of your arrival time. Lock your purse and any other valuables in the trunk of the car for safety. Always be sure to name wear the name badge that shows your identity 
and the agency for which you are working. If you are in a dangerous area, it might be a good idea to make joint visits with another co-worker or have an escort that would go with you. Always keep a full gas tank and avoid parking on deserted streets. For safety's sake, also keep a cell phone with you. This may be provided by the home health agency or you may be reimbursed for use of your own cell phone. Once you get to the home, infection control is probably the most important thing. This means that you need to wash your hands frequently, much as you have learned to do in the hospital or long-term care setting. Unless your hands are visibly soiled from something that, uh, soil uh, from uh, dirt or other item on your hands, it's better in the home if you not use bar soap that the patient has, but rather the agency will provide you with a waterless uh, foam or gel that you would uh, put on your hands a small amount and rub in and uh, interlace your fingers much like you would be washing your hands with soap and water. Use standard precautions if you come in contact with blood, body fluids, mucous membranes, or non-intact skin. Always maintain a clean environment. You will probably be provided with uh, your home health agency a medical bag that has in it some of the supplies that you would need to care for this patient. It might include um, a thermometer, uh, the gel or foam that you would use to wash your hands, um, and blood pressure cuff, simple dressings, and so forth. That needs to be placed on a clean environment. In the home, you might put it on a uh, newspaper or some paper toweling uh, rather than put it directly on a chair because you will be taking that medical bag back out of the home with you and you do not want to carry the germs from one home to another. Care for food properly when you're working in the home. That means wash fruit and vegetables before serving them and store food at the correct temperature. Always dispose of tissues and other ways in receptacle Wear utility gloves when cleaning environmental services. And don't allow things to become cluttered and accumulate. Safety hazard prevention is another important part of home health nursing. Caution the patient against smoking, especially in bed or when oxygen is in use. Never use extension cords or other electrical cords if they are frayed. Check the water temperature always before uh, using them on a patient. Remove any loose scatter rug to prevent falls from occurring. Report any equipment that needs repair, things such as broken handrails, walkers, uh, unstable chairs, or wheelchairs need to be reported. And lock up any chemicals, medications, or other items if the patient is at all disoriented. Emergency care is another important aspect of the home visit. The information about any emergency care will be provided by the nurse, or you will be made aware of by the nurse. Things such as if the patient is to or wear a medical alert bracelet or a medical uh, alert necklace, uh, maybe they have an allergy to uh, dust or penicillin or maybe they are a diabetic, that's good information that the nurse would make you aware of. 
You would also receive information from the uh, nurse whether or not the patient had an advanced directive. If you recall, an advanced directive is a document that expresses the patient uh, wishes in case he or she would become uh, incompetent. Also, uh, you would be made aware of any special storage place in the home for important medical information and papers. There could be a wide variety of types of emergencies in caring for someone in the home. There might be a poisoning, fire, a seizure or choking. The patient might fall and break a bone. There might be gas leaks. It's important to have information readily available in the event of emergency so that you can call quickly for help. Have emergency phone numbers near the phone. That means the ambulance, hospital, police and fire department, and key family members that should be alerted. Give your name and title, the name of the patient, and clearly state the problem and the address and phone number of the residence where you are. State the, the condition of the patient and always remain with the patient until help can arrive. Time management skills are very important for completing care within a certain amount of time as you will have several patients in the course of a day. All will be expecting to have their care given at certain specified times. Patients are relying on you to get them up in the morning so arriving late uh, prevents them from getting out of bed and being able to get their breakfast. You may uh, be required to put patients to bed at night if you don't maintain a, uh, an efficient schedule and um, uh, remain on time, those patients become overtired from having to sit up well past their normal bedtime. Be sure that all is with you when you make a visit. Be organized. That means make sure you have your watch, that you have the forms needed for your documentation, that you have the home health medical bag with the supplies that you need, and make a work plan before your arrival. For example, maybe you'll decide that you're going to assist the patient with a shower and then uh, do range of motion following that so that their limbs may be limbered up from the warm water running over them in the shower. Organize your supplies before beginning activities. You want to be sure that you have everything at hand before assisting the individual into the shower or tub because you wouldn't want to leave them unattended to go and uh, get supplies once you have gotten them into the tub or shower setting. Limit the discussions that you are having with other family members to conserve time. Uh, always be courteous, but do not allow them to draw you into conversations that take you away from the focus of the patient that you are there to serve or um, have you get on um, off your schedule. Always keep the home health agency informed. If you're getting behind, let them know immediately. It's possible that someone else may be able to go and see the patient that you were supposed to see in your next visit, or at least it would show respect for the home health agency to call the next individual to let them know that you are going to be running a little bit late. Avoid getting bogged down in tasks that are not part of your assignment. For example, you would not, even though it might be nice to do, uh, you do not have the time to do any heavy housekeeping, things like cleaning their closets, washing windows. Those are all things that would be over and above 
the responsibilities of the home health aide. Care needs, uh, provisions in the home um, need to be adapted from what they are in the hospital or long-term care facility. As you know, the medical equipment that is used can be extremely expensive. Many patients do not have the resources in order to be purchasing these kinds of expensive items. For example, in a hospital or long-term care facility, there are very expensive shower chairs that you will have access to because they are used on more than one patient. Instead of purchasing ex uh, expensive uh, shower chairs, in the home frequently what may be used would be a very inexpensive plastic chair and that would be able to be placed inside the shower for the patient to sit on. The particular ch shower chair that's shown in this picture cost $5 and uh, as a result, you can see it could do the same thing as providing a safe place for the person to sit as the more expensive items might be. Another adaptation might be in the uh, placement of a barrier for the medical bag that goes into the home. In um, some instance, you might use uh, chucks or another uh, barrier that is more expensive, newspaper or a paper towel that might be in the home or that you take with you in the medical bag can work just as well and help limit the, uh, the cost of the barrier. Another thing that you can adapt in the home is the waste basket liners. Some of the liners that you'll use in healthcare facilities are expensive. In the home, oftentimes uh, you, they will just use bags that have come from uh, stores, grocery stores or department stores, and it works just as well. Another adaptation might be in a cold compress. Rather than the costly cold compresses that you may be used to in uh, a medical facility, sometimes in the home, frozen peas or other frozen item can be used as a, a cold compress with the same uh, high quality results. In addition to a nurse and nursing assistant coming into the home, there are many other disciplines that are involved in home health care. Some of the professionals that come into the home might be a physical therapist, a physical therapist may come into the home to help with gait training or muscle strengthening following a hip fracture or knee repair that an individual might have had or maybe they've had a stroke and they need some assistance in gaining muscle strength again. There might be occupational therapy coming into the home to assist in activities of daily living. Uh, some of these activities of daily living might be assisting the person to know how to uh, work in a kitchen setting again, how to work with um, um, buttoning their buttons uh, or other grooming kinds of activities. Another professional that may come into the home might be a social worker. A social worker is able to uh, let the patient and family know of resources that are available to them. Things such as respite care so that the family can um, get some assistance, temporary assistance for the patient that they're primarily caring for. A social worker might be able to provide for meals on wheels and so forth. And another professional might be a chaplain service that would come in uh, at the end of life for a patient to assist with patient and, and family um, for those particular hospice needs. Assisting patients in their home can be a very challenging experience. 
knowledge about ways to ensure your personal safety as well as the patient's, maintain a clean, comfortable environment, and work effectively with patients and families can make being a home health aide a very rewarding career.